Asterius vulgaris. The starfish. Usually he has five points. But sometimes in the fierce struggle for existence beneath the sea, he loses a point or a limb. The parent body drifts away and the lost limb willing somehow to become a part of that which was once the whole is left by itself, lost forever by itself. And then within the billion cells of the seemingly dead member, longing is translated into growth. Now cell by cell, the limb remembers that of which it was once a part. And now cell by cell reconstructs itself into the shape, the function, and the pattern of that to which it once belonged. Until finally, memory becomes reality. A new starfish has been created. This was done by a very common creature. Asterius vulgaris the common starfish. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You gave me the wrong ticket. This is for the train to Seaside. And that's what you said. Oh, no, I'm sure I said Woodmere. All right, lady. Good man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, miss. Yes. You're on the wrong train, miss. We're going to Seaside. Oh, no. No, I'm going to Woodmere. Yes, that's the way your ticket reads, but this train goes to Seaside. Seaside? Ah. Uh, well, I, I, I will have to change. You can't. It's nonstop all the way. What can I do? Nothing. Let's order Peter a chicken sandwich. Norman, that girl's staring at you with the most peculiar expression on her face. Norman, what's the matter? Norman, do you know her? Norman, what? do you know her? No, I don't know her. I never saw her before. My life. Norman, please, what's the matter? I don't know.
Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what uh, time is the next train for Boston, please? There's three tomorrow. Oh, no, tonight. I mean, as soon as possible. There's none tonight. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh, thank you. Need a taxi, lady? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I want to go to a hotel. Anyone particular? No. No, I, I've never been here before. Oh, I can make a recommendation. You could try the Hotel Alton. It's the newest one here. It's quiet, comfortable, nice people go there. I want to go to the Seacliff House. Those your bags? Oh, yes. I thought you said you were never here before. Taxi's over there, lady. Taxi, mister? Uh, yes. Where'd you like to go? A Seacliff house. Ah, sure thing. You have in trouble with me, son. Here we are, two fares and both for the same place. I'll tell you what I'll do. I won't charge you two fares or as little as one. Is that fair enough? You folks just make yourself comfortable and I'll take care of your baggage. It's a pretty town, isn't it? I uh, imagine it's busier than this ordinarily. In season it is. We know each other. I know. But I don't know how that is, though. I live in Chicago. Evanston. I used to go down to Evanston two or three times a month on business. Do you know Newton Falls? In Massachusetts, just outside Boston. I lived there all my life. That was your wife with you and your son. Yes. Have you ever been to this place before? I think so. When I was a little boy with my father. I think I was here once before. As I remember, it was late in the fall. Why? Why do you make me feel so odd? 
unsettled. I've never been to this place before. I never heard the name of this place before today. And yet I... I do know it. I have a feeling that... This is second chance. Yes. This is the second chance. Look. There they are. They fly south and nest. Far places. And then something draws them back again. And the fledglings return from wherever their parents came. Did you know that sometimes, year after year, without ever having seen it before, the fledgling returns to the nest the parents used? Are you married? No. But I will be. In a month. There's something I want to tell you. No. No. No, please don't. Please. I've got to tell you. My wife and I have been married for almost 10 years. I have never looked at another woman. I have never looked at another woman. Don't avoid me. I'm just trying to straighten this thing out. I'm not a boy. I don't play games and I, I don't flirt. I feel as if I'm being torn apart. And I know you feel that way too. Please, please leave me alone. your cheek. I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Why did you go riding off by yourself? Because I had to have time to think about us. Because I had to be by myself. I don't want you to be by yourself. Why, why do you always run away from me? I don't want to let you out of my sight. How do you think I must feel? You're another woman's husband, and I've got you in my thoughts all the time. Whatever I do, wherever I am, I think about you. And don't think about me need me, I need you. Be with me. No. No, I want to go. Let me go. Please, please. Let me go. I don't know what it is, but it's clearer now. Yes. I'll tell you something else. Fight ends. And we go walking together. In the woods. And... And there's a waterfall. And we sit there hand in hand. It's the last day. It's all we have. But it's full. It's a wonderful day. It ends sadly. Not painfully. There's just emptiness and sorrow for a while. And then it's forgotten. 
this is all we have, then. What? I think we can find the waterfall that way. Because it's part of goodbye. Please. Please let me persuade you. Please stay with me. You are married and I'm engaged. We're not children. No. I'm going home. I know. I take the morning train. I know. Which of this is real and which is fantasy? Can you sort it out? I love you. I know. Norman. I love you. Have you stopped loving me? Or is this something else? This is something else. Can you explain it to me? I don't know. Would you try? I'd have to understand it myself first. I was talking to the manager earlier. He said in the old days, people used to dance out here. That's why the Japanese lanterns are still here. There were lanterns out here in a band every night. He says he'd love to see people dancing again. Japanese lanterns. And on Thursday nights, Fireworks. Well, well, yes. That's what he said. Did you talk with him, too? I have to see her once more. I need to tell you something. I need to tell you. What is your first name? Norman Brownlee. Yes, of course. When I was young, before I married your father, I went on vacation to Seaside. I met a young man there, John Bromley. He had a very young son with him. I imagine that was you. I understood that he was married. Just the same I was drawn to him, and he to me. We met simply enough on a cliff overlooking the sea. There were wild birds flying overhead, and we talked of the strange compulsion, that 
marvelous impulse that causes him to migrate so far each year. His wife was jealous. She saw him talking to me one morning and made a scene. I didn't really blame her. Out of shame and guilt, and I must confess, out of anger, I took one of the horses and rode out along a road I knew. Your father rode after me. We quarreled and then made up. We walked in the woods and found a waterfall and held hands. No more. That evening we danced and I kissed him. No more. The next morning I went home. I loved your father dearly. I thought little about Mr. Bromley after that time. I want you to understand. I never thought of him again until after your father died last year. You must believe me. But lately I've thought about it all again and again and again. Shortly after I came back from Seaside, John came to see me. He said that he was making a good marriage with his wife. He brought me a present. This. I've always kept it. Do you remember when you were a little girl how you used to love to listen to the sound of the ocean captured in this shell? Mr. Bromley, do you understand why I've told you all this? Marianne came back from Seaside and told me what had happened. I realized that somehow, in some way that I'm not able to explain, you two were living out my dream. I want to free you. I want to free you both. Thank you. I'm free. I'm free. He's left his package. When Marianne is married and her daughter has grown, I suppose there'll be three shells? The wild bird is drawn to a nest it has never seen. The part remembers the whole, and out of it, the limb of a starfish creates the parent from which it was torn. Now, do you suppose that we only inherit the color of our eyes shape of our heads? Or is there a deeper memory in every cell? A genetic memory? Now, we don't really know, do we? 